Okay, in this problem, we are at part B. And at part B, we are halfway to the equivalence point. We talked about in the introductory video that 20 milliliters was the equivalence point. And so 10, minute, 10 milliliters would be halfway to that equivalence point here at this point. So part B, we are right around this region. Maybe that dot is really the halfway point. I don't know. But somewhere halfway between 0 and 20, we are at part B. Now we are in the buffer region, but we just set out working this problem. Um, you don't really need to know that you're in the buffer region in order to do the problem. Now, we are ready to start the reaction. The procedure to follow when you're doing a titration, when you're finally adding the acids and the bases together, is to write the one-way reaction between the acid, which in this case we're using HA to represent that butanoic acid, and the base. It's a strong base, and I will not put the sodium in there, it's a spectator, and it just gets us confused if we do. I always use OH to represent a strong base because the sodium is not doing anything. This is a one-way reaction because the strong base will force it to completion. The acid will donate its proton and you will be left with A- minus and water. Because this is a one-way reaction, I do not um, do an ICE table for equilibrium, but I'm going to do an ICF table. This is a way of doing a limiting reactant problem. We plug moles into this table, not molarity into the table. So we need to go about figuring out the moles of every substance or these first two reactants that are in there. So molarity times volume will give me the number of moles of a substance. So let's start with figuring out the number of moles of my weak acid, butanoic acid. The molarity of this weak acid is 0 0.249 moles per liter, that's what molarity is, times the volume, and I'm going to convert that volume to liters, it's 20 milliliters or 0 0.02. 0, 0, 0 liters. And that will give me the number of moles of the acid of 4.98 times 10 to the minus 3. And that can go into my table right here, um, 4.98 times 10 to the negative 3. Now for the number of moles of the OH minus. This would be the same as the number of moles of sodium hydroxide because there's one sodium hydroxide in every, uh, there's one hydroxide in every sodium hydroxide. So I will take the molarity of that sodium hydroxide, which again is 0 0.249 moles per liter times the volume of the sodium hydroxide, which is 0 0.01 liters. And this will give me the number of moles of, so of hydroxide of 0 0.00249 moles. And I can plug this into the equation up here, which is 2.49 times 10 to the negative 3. Now, before this reaction has taken place, there is no A minus, and um, we don't care about water. There's lots of water. We will consume this reaction. The way you work an ICF table is to use it up or, or c continue the reaction until the smallest reactant, the smallest amount of reactant is consumed. So we see here that there's less sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to use up all of that sodium hydroxide. And I'm going to carry that across each line, negative 2.49 times 10 to the minus 3 here and positive 2.49 times 10 to the minus 3 here. This will leave me in my change line, I mean my final line, when the reaction has completed, by using up all of the limiting reactant, I will be remaining 2.49 times 10 to the minus 3 of this. I will have consumed all of the hydroxide, and I will have produced 2.49 times 10 to the minus 3 of the A minus. Now I look at my F line and I see that I have some HA present and I have some A minus present and that is by definition a buffer since it's a weak acid and it's conjugate base. 
So I know the henderson hasselbalch equation will apply. So to determine the pH of this solution, I know that it is equal to the pKa of the acid plus the log of either the concentration or you can use the number of moles of the B over the number of moles of the A. So pKa would be the negative log of 1.54 times 10 to the minus 5, that is the Ka value of butanoic acid, plus the log. We seek out the number of moles of base. Well, this is my base here. It's 2.49 times 10 to the minus 3. And the acid is 2.49 times 10 to the minus 3. And this is going to give me a value of this part here is the log of 1. The log of 1 equals 0. So this term goes away. And we're left with just 4.812, which is the pKa value. So something that you need to be aware of and could save you time if you remembered, you wouldn't have to do all this work, is it's always true that pH equals pKa at 1 half the distance to the equivalence point. And that's where we are here. 10 milliliters was halfway toward to the equivalence point. We saw that with this um, profile. We were halfway there. And whenever you are halfway to the equivalence point, the pH equals the pKa and you would not have had to have done all of this work, uh, but we needed to see it to see why it's true. It's true because this term goes away. You have converted half of your weak acid over to the conjugate base, giving you equal amounts of both.